Hello friends, this video on control and coordination part 15 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us talk about the nervous system in mollusks. Mollusks, as you can see, the screen loaded with the pictures of Pila, Unio, Chitin, Octopus. They are some of the mollusks. So they have relatively complex nervous system. Some mollusks do not exhibit cephalization, while some others are highly cephalized. So basically in mollusks, if you look at the different animals which fall under the category of mollusks, their structures are quite varied from each other. Some of them look very simple, some of them look very complex. So that is why even the cephalization, it is absent in some of the mollusks, even though they fall under the category of a higher animal, but still the cephalization is not there. Whereas in some others, the bodies are extremely cephalized. Right, so two extreme ends. So we see a wide variety under mollusks. So they have two pairs of main nerve cords running the length of the body. Okay, so here also we'll have two nerve cords. Ganglia are present as local control centers in important body parts. Like you saw in arthropods also, we had ganglia in each segments. In annelids also, we had ganglia in each segments of the segmented body. So in mollusks, they, the bodies are not segmented, but they have organs. The organ differentiation was there. So they have different organs. So it was seen that here, ganglia was present at all important organs of the body. For example, they had something called as cerebral ganglia, which was present in the brain. They had something called as pedal ganglia, which was present, which, which was actually serving as food, right? So if I want to, I mean, uh, describe it structurally, it was something like this. So they had ganglia in all important structures. So if you see, these dots represent nothing but ganglia. So this was the cerebral ganglia. Somewhere around here was the esophagus. So the cerebral ganglia was present above the esophagus. And in the lowermost part was present the pedal ganglia. That is which was serving as a foot. So from there arises the nerve cords. So these are the nerve cords which flows through the entire body. So these are the nerve cords running the length of the body. So these ganglia acted as the local centers, right? So cerebral ganglia was handling the brain located about above esophagus. Pedal ganglia was handling the food movements located below the esophagus. So the esophagus was also encircled by a nerve ring. So there was a nerve ring which was present, a ring-like structure, which was surrounding the esophagus. So that is how the nervous system looked like in uh, the mollusks which were cephalized. Specialized sensory organs were also present. Many of them had eyes as photoreceptors. Sensor containing tentacles present to detect chemicals, vibrations and touch. For example, in octopus, they have these tentacles. So they act as chemoreceptor as well as tangoreceptors. So now since they act as tangoreceptors, it also helps them to catch their prey. Whenever they come in contact with some other animal, they can feel that because their tentacles act as tangoreceptors. So it also helps them in catching their prey, right? So we have discussed so many classes. So now comes the next one, that is the echinoderms. So when I say echinoderms, we are going to talk about the sea urchin, the starfish, the feather star, right? So they have got radial symmetry, right? So their nervous system is also radial. They have modified nerve net present. So again, the concept of nerve net, that is simple nerves joined together to form net-like structure. They have a central nerve ring present from which nerves extend to each arm. So this is the nerve ring. And these nerves extending from the nerve ring, they extend into each arm, right? So that is why their nervous system also have a radial symmetry because their bodies are radially symmetrical. They also have specialized sensory organs and receptors present. Some of them have simple eye spots at, as photoreceptors. Some have touch sensitive tentacles. Some others have sensory cells in epidermis, that means skin. 
right? So it varies actually. It, it varies from one organism to another. Maybe there is a different receptor in a, uh, in a uh, feather star and uh, there is a different uh, receptor in case of a uh, sea urchin, right? So it varies from one animal to Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.